Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of When I Grow Up Wednesday. We are joined today by Dr. Hudson of Gordonsville Veterinary Clinic. Join us as we learn what it takes to be a veterinarian. So I'm Logan Hudson. Uh, I'm the veterinarian here at Gordonsville Vet Clinic. Um, We've been here for probably a year. Well, uh, so probably, you know, everybody in kindergarten is like, I want to be a veterinarian, you know, and I, I said that, you know, and I, I've even got, I'm pretty sure I, my mom showed me a piece of paper that I had that was like, when I was from kindergarten, like, oh, I, I really want to be a veterinarian. And, you know, I guess I tried some other things and I wasn't a huge fan of it. And then, you know, I kind of got to the, you know, the point in college where I was like, what do I want to be? So this is kind of, I, I chose between, you know, this and some other things. And this was really the only thing that I really thought that I was, you know, passionate enough about that I could stay in school that long. So I graduated from Smith County High School in 2011. Uh, I pursued my bachelor's at Tennessee Tech. Uh, so four years undergraduate, taking everything from intro biology all the way up to organic chemistry, biochemistry. Uh, a little bit of all that. Uh, I wound up applying to vet school in my, I guess that would be my senior year. Uh, I got in before I had all of my credits to get my bachelor's. Uh, so I went ahead and went on to vet school. Did You can do it in three years, I did it in four, but uh, four years of vet school, uh, you know, following my undergrad and, you know, four years of vet school. And then that kind of, once you, we do three years of curricular stuff, so you're in class, you're doing all the stuff. And then the fourth year, uh, the way we do it at Lincoln Memorial, where I went to vet school at, is on the fourth year, we go out and travel around the country. And I've been pretty much everywhere from Chattanooga to Buffalo, New York, and pretty much everywhere in between. So I've done a little bit of it all. And, you know, they kind of set it up where you do everything from you know shelter medicine where you're doing like spay and neuter and that type of thing all the way up to you know uh referral centers that are doing like oncology and you know in-depth like uh, thoracic surgery and stuff like that so that's kind of that's kind of my path to getting here so the hardest part of my job uh well the hardest part for most people would be getting out of bed at three o'clock in the morning to go pull a calf that's you know you know, that's tied to a tree in the middle of a field. You know, I kind of enjoy that kind of stuff. So that's kind of, you know, I, that's, that's how I get out of bed is I, you know, I enjoy helping everybody out and, you know, I enjoy helping farmers. I come from a farming background. So that's probably the most, you know, difficult, but you know, that's the part I enjoy of my job. Uh, probably the most rewarding thing is, you know, regardless of the circumstance, you know, doing, you know, I enjoy going out and helping people and seeing, you know, seeing something that's sick or you know somebody's pet that they really care about that you know they don't know what's wrong but they know something's wrong and you know seeing the you know the the final product of you know of your work seeing it get better that's probably the best part of my job average day for me i start out you know kind of having an idea of what's going to happen uh you know, that never happens. But, you know, that's probably one of the more, more rewarding things I've been and the more enjoyable things, you know, it's never the same day. I don't have the same day twice, ever, not ever. You know, I start out eight o'clock in the morning. I try to get over here and get started with appointments. Usually at some point in there, somebody calls with some kind of catastrophe, you know, whether it be Kevin or so, something along those lines. Uh, you know, we try to work all those in, um, you know, surgeries or middle of the day type stuff. And then, so, yeah, you know, I'm on call, so when you know when all that's over and 4:30 gets around, uh, you know we're, we're you know everything at the clinic's starting to wind down. But you know sometimes I go straight home and we eat supper together, and you know me and my, I get to spend some time with my wife and my dogs and stuff like that, and go check on my own cattle and stuff like that. But a lot of the times I come home about you know seven or eight. But sometimes you know there's you know there's, there's things out there times like that I get home at you know one in the morning and my you know my wife's have made me supper and it's sitting in my microwave and uh, you know that's you know that's kind of you know it, there's never the same day but it doesn't really follow a script either as far as you know what I would tell somebody that would you know want to follow kind of in my shoes uh, the main thing is you know find something you're passionate about it doesn't have to be a large animal it doesn't have to be a small animal I mean it doesn't have to be I mean I, I have friends that do nothing but zoo animals you know everybody's got their calling you know but and don't do it because anybody else wants you to do it you need to pick something that you're passionate about you know I 
I get up every morning and roll out of bed and I'm ready to roll because I enjoy it and I don't work. Like this is not work. You know, this is, you know, I, I'm meeting new people. You know, I, I'm constantly meeting more people. And, you know, I have such a broad network of, you know, people that I'm engaged with that, you know, I've always got somebody I can call for whatever because, you know, I, you know, I, I'm allowed and I'm lucky enough and fortunate enough to have the job that I have. But I enjoy it and, you know, it reflects in your work. If you're passionate about what you do and you enjoy it, you know, don't let anybody talk you out of doing what you want to do. Thanks so much to Dr. Hudson for giving us a little bit of his time as we learned what it took to become a veterinarian. We hope that our 4-H'ers are taking these videos, exploring careers that they might want to enjoy, and you are using them to help prepare yourself for the future.